stupendous! The greatest moment I've seen. This is history being written. Amazing. We're alive. Go, 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 footy. It's your match day. We're going to kick balls like get your match day. Welcome back, baby. <laughs> The footy fetish show. The fetish is real. The footy is soccer. We fill those holes, call them goals. We take the balls and we put them where they need to be. Slap them in the back of that net with these big old feet. <laughs> <laughs> the big stinky feet. Oh, God. Man, I got me a pair of stinky feet. Makes me want to talk some Champions League with Ocho. Yeah! Back on the mic! Yeah. As always, pleasure to be here with you, Mike Daddy. I am so excited for Champions League. You know what I'm excited most about this is that we will not see two teams from the same domestic league in the finals. It's going to be one of three, Spain, England, or Italian. All right? Can't wait for that. Love that. That's probably my most favorite thing. Champions League has finally figured out to not have two teams from the same league in the final. That's one of my biggest pet peeves, and it's gone. With that being said, who's playing on Tuesday? Oh. oh. First, we got Real Madrid taking on the mighty, mighty Manchester City. I like what you said, too, man. I haven't... Um... I didn't enjoy too much that final. That was what Tottenham and Liverpool. Yep. I will say I enjoyed the final. What was that Bayern and um and Dortmund? Yep. A couple years back, but but also to your point, it was kind of boring as fuck up until about the 80th minute. So yeah. And then don't um, forget Real Madrid, Atletico Madrid met twice in three years. Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. Don't do that. Yeah. That's. Yeah. Well, this one they certainly ain't in the same league. I'll tell you right oh, now. Lord, we got champions right here, yeah, boy. We got we got league leaders. Actually, fun fun stat for Real Madrid. Matt Boy Stat Boy was going to be here. Matty Stats. I have to read this off. I couldn't believe it. Real Madrid have won all possible trophies within the shortest period of time ever, four hundred and seventy five days. All right, so here we go. April. 2022, La Liga with Carlo Ancelotti. May 2022, Champions League. August 2022, UEFA Super Cup. February 2023, Club World Cup. And then over the weekend, May 2023, Copa del Rey. They got five trophies in just over a year. That's insane. That's fucking crazy. Who's done that? Yeah, you have to you have to think back, man. Who's done that? I don't know. I'm su- I'm surprised they didn't say, "Oh, and Real Madrid weren't the only ones." It's like, no, I think that's the only club. That's the record. Yeah. I was gonna say, I think the only guess I would have is, "Gee, who else would have done that?" Probably Real Madrid. Probably Real Madrid. <laughs> I would guess maybe Mourinho's Inter. Yeah. Right. Yeah, because yeah, because they won the Scudetto that year. Yeah. The only way you can pull this off is if you win Champions League. You have to win Champions League because then that opens the door for the UEFA a Club World Cup. Yes. Right. So if you don't have Champions League, then you're not even in this conversation. And then somewhere either before or after the Champions League, you've got to win your domestic league. And then on top of that, you've got to win Copa del Rey either before or after. So they were able to win the domestic league last year, and then they won Copa del Rey this year. And in between, Champions League, Super Copa, Club World Cup. Like, what the fuck? That's crazy. Knocking fucks, man. Crazy. And they they still look stronger than ever, right? Yeah. So, as Booty just said, Real Madrid, Man City, both of these teams are just firing on all cylinders. We saw Real Madrid dismantle Chelsea. We saw Real Madrid dismantle. Who's the, who's the team they played before this? It was Chelsea, right? Fuck, I'm already blanking. Uh, Ch- uh, City played uh, played Bayern. Bayern. And then Real, didn't Real play? Chelsea. It's Chelsea. And then before that, 
well, if you want to call it, you know, Chelsea, Chelsea kind of showed up and, and, and like walked around a little bit and then he enjoyed the sights, you know. Yeah. Liverpool. So Liverpool come in, dismantle Liverpool. Five to two. And then dismantle Chelsea. Man City doing the same thing. 7-0 to Leipzig. Come in, dismantle Bayern Munich. 3-0. And then on the following leg, 1-1. These two teams, I'm tempted to take off work, man. Like, this is going to be a fucking fireworks show in the form of soccer. 90 minutes. Do you think these two teams sit back? Hell nah. Hell fucking nah. These teams are going at each other. Now, I will say, game number one, leg one, they might be a little conservative. They might not take as many risks going forward and then wait for that leg two. What are the results? Are we ahead? Are we draw? Are we losing? And that's where one team might take a little bit more risks. However, in your opinion, Booty, would you rather beat the brakes off of a team early and jump out with a heavy lead or be conservative and then wait for that second leg. What would you rather do if you were a coach? That's tough, man. As, as a coach, I think I'd rather play a little bit more conservative, but as a player, I'd rather grab that goal. I don't know. I don't know because yeah, it, it's hard to hold that lead, man. We've seen that in so many, so many years now in Champions right. League. It's really hard to, to, to keep the momentum when you jump out and you grab those early goals and you try to sit on them, it almost never works really. If you think about it. Yeah. Cause I mean, the whole script is flipped. The fact that it's, you know, if it was a one game take all, how about we say that if it was a one game take all, it wasn't the two leg. Yeah. If it was one leg take all, then I say, sure, go ahead and just try and punch them in the mouth as yeah, well as you can. Absolutely. But also you got, you know, they also are going to have games in the middle. Of these two legs, it's true. You, you're going to have to play a little conservative as far as uh, keeping these players healthy, keeping these these players stamina up. You know, um, so yeah, that's a that's a great question. I feel like I would play it a little more conservative just because it's the the two legs. That second leg, we have always just seen people just come back and come back from the dead. You know, it's great. And the one thing I'll throw out there about this one though is a little. It's going to be make it a little more difficult, though, if you are playing catch-up. If you're Real Madrid and you're playing catch-up, this game's in Madrid for this first league. So Pounded. you might not want to play catch-up heading back to Manchester, you know? Right. So, so interesting. What, what do you think? Uh, I, I'm If I'm at home first, I'm going to try to just go – I'm going to go balls out here. I'm going to try and put as many points on the board as possible, knowing that I've got a second game that if I need to – that's where I can kind of catch up, um, which is interesting because this is the reverse of like my substitution strategy, which is I'd rather if there's a if there's a risk of like a player, right? I can't play one player at his best for all game. I'd rather put that player in at the end versus putting them in first. Now, in this instance, I've got two legs. I'd rather try and be risky and get those goals early on right now, then try and go back into Man City and try and win there. Uh, I think you have to try and win right now if you're Real Madrid. If you're Man City, I think you have the tilt as far as skill. If we look from top to bottom, goalkeeper to forward, I, I can't name any players on Real Madrid that um, that absolutely beat out anyone on Man City one to one, and you know we don't know who Pep's going to start right right now. Pep's been throwing out these crazy formations with players in unexpected positions, so we really we can't really give you a an accurate one on one representation. I can tell you Holland and Benzema, that's like for like for me. It's the same player. I'd take either of them right now. Uh, De Bruyne and Vinicius Jr., different positions, but as far as effectiveness on the field, I'd say they're even. I don't think you can put one over the other. De Bruyne, obviously better assister, better in the midfield, better passer. Vinicius, better at 1v1s, better at getting goals, right? So 
You know, we look at Gundogan. Gundogan compared to Rodrigo or Valverde is probably where you're going to get that tilt in Man City's favor. But then you go to the midfield, Modric, Cruz, and Valverde. Rodri, probably like for like for Cruz. Stones, compared to like Modric or Cruz, I'm going to take one of those Real Madrid boys. But then you got Bernardo Silva, compared to Valverde. So you do have these moments on the field where you get these 1v1s where this is where the tilt happens. But it's it's, it's not a lot of, of mat- matchups. And this is where I think Pep, He's either going to overthink this like he normally does or he's going to hit this perfectly on the head. And we know what Carlo Ancelotti is going to do. He's going to have the same formation, 4-3-3. He's going to run the same shit he always does. Nothing nothing crazy, nothing out the blue. Might even sit back a little bit because he knows that Man City is going to want possession and maybe do what he did against Liverpool in that Champions League final where – Sits back, lets them go, lets them go. You have the best goalkeeper in the world right now, in my opinion, Courtois. Let them take shots, pepper the net, try and hit them on a counter. Use Modric and Cruz and Valverde to create chances for your three studs going forward. Um, I was kind of a, a long-winded approach to that game right there. What are your takeaways? What, what are what are some things uh, that you expect Pep to do? that's going to be controversial or does he do anything controversial? I think he'll, as we've seen with, uh, with city, um, you know, something to keep in mind is feels like the flow is always going to run through De Bruyne. Um, it's a great point. So if you look back, uh, I think it was what round of 16. Yeah. When they were playing or maybe it was the last, yeah, it was round of 16. Uh, that was the last time we saw city look a little, uh, a little vulnerable. They drew Leipzig. Everybody thought maybe Leipzig was going to upset them in that second round, you know, in the second leg anyway. Oh, interesting. Um, who didn't play that game, right? De Bruyne. De Bruyne. That's right. So as we saw the whole time, I remember we, we spoke about it. Um, I think we had our, our friends from uh, from uh, Soccer Heads FC on the show. That's right. Um, you know, we noticed that, the burner wasn't in a lot of the service that they were trying to get to Holland was almost forced or just kind of non-existent really. Um, Spot on. Well, so that if everything, if he, if he comes out with the formation that, that allows the flow to go through to Bruna and let him kind of quarterback it. Um, I think uh city's going to look great. Um, something else to, to point out. I think that should be pointed out. We always uh, make fun of this guy a whole lot because I mean, Hey, he uh, he stars in movies, man. He's there, you know. He was in Bend It Like Beckham. He had a gray haircut. He looked great. Jack Jack really. You know? <laughs> um, little pu- little puppy dog, you know. Oh yeah. Get a little puppy dog haircut going on. Uh, yeah. Fucking uh, Jamie Tart, you know. Uh, for all our uh, Ted Lasso fans out there. But uh, you know, we 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 made fun of that guy a lot. But you know what, man? He's been kind of balling out lately, uh, especially in Champions League. I feel like the last. Especially that, that actually that whole series against uh against Bayern, man. Look at that. Look how beautiful that is. <laughs> Come here, <Kiera>, man. <laughs> you know what haircut I wanna go for? I wanna do some a haircut that Beckham hasn't done. Well what about <laughs> What about that movie about Beckham? What about the movie about Beckham? He's never done that haircut. <laughs> you you're laughing at me, haircut. You're trying to mug me off. Oh yeah. Uh, we gotta. I gotta. I gotta give him, give him some credit, man. He's an easy, easy uh, punching bag. But yeah, he's looked really great. He's looked fantastic down the left side uh, last. Sure. I, 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 and against Byron too, who you know, no slouch, obviously. But right. Byron's gonna play physical with you. I was expecting him to just roll around on the ground most of the time. He didn't. He looked great. Yeah. He was looking every every option that he was. He was either creating an option or he was he was picking the right option as far as uh as far as his uh his passes. So. He um he was he's been fun to watch. I think I'm gonna keep an eye on him too. For sure, that's a, that's a good shout. I like that a lot. Would you say that he has lived up to the price tag that they've paid for? I don't think yet, but Not close. Yet. Okay. You know, if he if he does it again, especially in these next two matches, man, if he does it again, then I I I think so for what they pay. You know, because we're all you know that's that's chump change to them anyway. You know, what's what's a hundred million if it don't work out, right? <laughs> 
It's funny uh, you you say that. I was talking to Turtle today about City, and you know, of course, we were getting into it about their how much they overpaid for everybody and all that. And he made a comment. He said, "Yeah, you know, we paid 150 for Holland." And he and I was like, "What? Didn't you only pay like 50 or 60?" He's like, "Yeah, we did, but he's like, if you think about it, buying Grealish locked up the buy of Harry Kane, which means the next year we had to go and get Holland." And it was like, what? And he's like, we had to spend a hundred million on Grealish, so that we didn't buy Kane, so that we we could buy Holland the next year. Buy Holland. So therefore, Holland cost us a hundred and fifty mil. And I was like, wow, my head just exploded. I was like, that's fair. And you know what? That's a fair price for Holland too. So, right, you get what you pay for. If you told me I could get Holland and Grealish for a hundred and fifty, I'd be like, you're fucking lying. There's no way. Right. <laughs> and look at them. They got it. So it's like, all right, well, good for you. Uh, for me, one of the things that I'm going to be looking at is the back line for Real Madrid. Uh, Alaba and Rudiger still not as lock tight as we, as we, as I would like as a Real Madrid fan, phenomenal center backs, um, very athletic, but for me, I, I they somehow are susceptible to mistakes. Hopefully, you know, they've had enough time together that they've been able to grow. When you've got Modric, Cruz, and Valverde in front of you, it's really hard to feel pressure. Because if you ever feel like you're under pressure and that you, you're going to make a mistake, just find one of them. Find Modric. Dude is class on the ball. He won't turn it over. You know, I notice that at the younger ages – center backs are nervous to pass it into that center mid for fear that they turn it over in that, in that position. And now the attack's coming right at them and there's a lot of space behind them. You see that fear of, do I really trust you to hold this ball under pressure and not turn it over? There's no fear with Modric or Cruz there. I'm not, I'm not as experienced in seeing Valverde under pressure. But I would imagine he is of that quality if he's going to be playing in the midfield. Um, and then lastly, someone else on Man City that I'm going to be looking at is John Stones because he's playing out of position as a center defensive mid. And the last time they did this against Bayern, everyone said he looked great. I didn't really get to watch that game in detail, but from what I saw, he was able to hold his own, play the position, and and play the style that Pep requested of him. So. Very even sides. I'm really curious to see what Pep does here. Does Kyle Walker start? We've been seeing him shift Kyle Walker in and out. I don't know. Looking over at the injuries, this is the only reason I would say Kyle Walker does start is because Nathan Ake is a doubt. Uh, Ferland Mendy will be out for Real Madrid at the left back, which is why Kamavinga will be playing there. Foody, read these odds. For our Real Madrid versus Manchester City. Absolutely. Uh, okay, so we have a uh, Real Madrid plus two twenty. We have a draw at two sixty, and Manchester is favored very slightly, uh, plus one fifteen. Ooh. Yeah. So you got some all across the board. We got positives here. For this so, one, I would not take a result as a bet. I would look into. Shots for Vinicius, shots for Benzema, maybe an assist for uh, De Bruyne, maybe shots for Holland. You know, those kind of bets are more likely to hit, in my opinion, because as we said earlier, both of these teams will probably be going at each other's necks. Uh, I don't see Pep holding back and trying to play a defensive role. That's just not who he is. And Ancelotti knows that he's got the firepower to attack. So, be on the lookout for those types of bets. I know our uh, Bundesliga pundit loves to take those kinds of bets and stack them together in a parlay. So look for those if you have an opportunity. Moving on, we've got an amazing derby here on Wednesday. This is AC Milan hosting Inter Milan at the San Siro. Giuseppe Miazza in Milano, Italy. This one, I mean, could you have asked for a better semifinal here, bro? Woo! Could you have asked for a better semifinal here, bro? God damn! Oh, man. I'm jacked up, bro. I'm jacked up. 
I can't wait. It's spicy. It's spicy. And both of these teams, ironically, are actually fighting to stay in the top four so that they can play Champions League. Last time I checked, I believe Inter are three points ahead. It's a very tight race. I think it's Napoli have, have already run away with them. Are in second. And then I believe it is Lazio, Inter, I know Inter uh, went ahead and spanked uh, Roma yesterday to bump them down. They did. Poor Roma. They were missing Dybala, and they just have no yeah. one to create. Yeah, it seems that way. Oh, it's a two-point race between fourth and fifth. Looking at these results, just to quickly give you guys an idea of what's going on outside of Champions League, Napoli have run away with the league. They are 83 points. Juventus are in second place with 66. Lazio are in third with 64. Shout out to Juventus for, oh, I'm sorry, shout out to Milan for taking that dub away from Lazio. Inter are in fourth place with 63. AC Milan are in fifth place with 61. Atalanta with 58 and Roma with 58. We are looking at an eight point difference between second and seventh place and there are four games left, which means there are eight poss- I mean, 12 possible points uh, worth of shifting from top to bottom. So this table is very much not set, not any way guaranteed any spots for Champions League. Be on the lookout for Serie A finish. It's going to be electric. As Ray Hudson would say, it's going to be like a toaster and a tub. Electric. <laughs> <laughs> He threw it's like throwing a toaster into a swimming pool. Oh, what is it? He says it uh it a uh, hair dryer in a hot tub. That's what he says. Hair dryer in a hot tub. Yeah, you, you your <laughs> your accent put it in my head right there. <laughs> it's so electric. It's like a hair dryer in a hot tub. <laughs> Jump on in. This one I'm a little nervous for, if I'm gonna be honest, Booty, because over the weekend, our best player got sent off, not sent off, he got subbed off in the 11th minute. Rafael Leal came off with what appeared to be a a, a little bit of a hamstring muscle tweak. Uh, reports are uncertain. Some reports are saying he will not play. Others are saying he's an absolute go. We've got a quote from a teammate that said, he told me he was fine. So it could have been just a precaution. Not entirely sure. We don't have Rafael Leal. That means that Alexis Salamakis will be subbing in on that left wing with Brahim Diaz on the right. This one's going to be crazy. Uh, Inter are without a doubt the more on-form team. Not going to beat around the bush there. They are just on a tear running through Serie A. As Booty just said, they knocked out Roma, took those three points, and went about their way like it was nothing. Lukaku was on form again. Martinez and Lukaku double. Those guys, I mean, they they won the league when those two were together. Lukaku leaves and they lose. They get second place. Now they're back on the same team. They're in the semifinal of the Champions League. I am nervous about these two guys up front. Um, I think in the midfield department, it will be a very even match. Tonali, Benacer, and Krunic have done a phenomenal job holding down that midfield. We saw them Uh, We saw them against Napoli, clean sheets both games. Well, until the very end, I'm sorry. So they they got a clean sheet when it mattered. And then against the two games against Tottenham, clean sheets. Got out of there with a 1-0 aggregate. Uh, Booty, I've been talking a lot. What are your thoughts on this one here, the the derby? Yeah, man, you you kind of took the words out of my mouth there. Um, Really interesting to see – the fact that these two teams, where they're at right now, I feel like AC Milan has been pretty up and down, but their ups have been up, you know. Um, yeah. Their downs, they haven't stayed down too long, you know. Right. So I feel like um, it's a it's a dangerous time for both these teams to meet. Um, you look at Inter, like you just said, you know, they, they all of a sudden got on this tear where they, they almost, you know, it's it's hard to, to, to remember. Um, they kind of look a little bit shaky there. They kind of look like crap for a second. Going back to the round of 16, 
oh. um, having having some trouble with Porto, you know. Right. That's right. And then we, you know, we see them go against another Portuguese team. We're thinking, hey, man, this is, you know, they're gonna, they're really gonna have some trouble uh, with Benfica. The way that Benfica's been scoring goals, they end up pulling out of that one as well, and and almost whooping their ass pretty much the first leg. Um, so <clears throat> it's a, uh, it's it's interesting that these two are meeting now. Um, like you said, with so much on the line as far as the domestic league. Um, it's a tough. It's a really tough call. I could see this one going going to a draw. Oh. Um, okay. Just because I feel like these two sides are going to try and play each other out as much as they can. You know, feel each other out. If Leao is not playing, um, I would lean more towards Inter, but I'm leaning more towards um, more towards Milan. But uh, it's it's a tough one. I feel really safe on a draw on that one. Um, just to be a little safe, little Nancy there. Um, do we know what, what was the injury to, to lay out? You know, it was a, it was a muscle injury in his leg. I, I actually didn't see it live, but, um, from what I heard, the people that said they saw it were like, it's not an injury. Um, somebody was even making the comment that he was playing 4d chess and that he faked the injury to make Inter feel like he wasn't going to play and play this psychological game. And then all of a sudden he starts and he's a hundred percent healthy. And actually Inter wasn't prepared for this hundred percent healthy layout, uh, which I, I mean, leave it to the Italians to play some kind of fucking chess match like that, the psychological chess match. Um, but uh, we'll see, man. And, you know, like you look here, slim chance of recovering for the first leg. Um, I saw another one that says, He's in the gym. I mean, you're in the gym working out. I, I, he could miss, but he was in the gym today. It's like, so. <clears throat> yeah, that's weird. I don't know. Bart Scott shows up to practice in a t-shirt and shorts. You remember that? <laughs> <laughs> like what? Oh, she has shorts and t-shirt on, man. I remember when you and Russell heard that when we were in the commons and like for the next week, like anytime they'd like say some crappy piece of news, you'd be like, Bart Scott got a t-shirt and shorts on at practice. Like got the street clothes. <laughs> oh shit. Oh shit. Oh shit. Did you hear he's got the street clothes on. <laughs> it's like, what does that mean? Okay. Right. <laughs> also, what is street clothes? Yeah. Is that like play clothes? Like, is that like a, my, my mama used to say play clothes, go put your play clothes on. I see. Look right here. Lay out. I'll be back soon. That was seven hours ago. What is soon, Raphael? Yeah, I know. It's like <laughs> I think honestly, I'm gonna say it. I think they're they're playing a mind game with Inter. I think they're playing a mind game. Do you remember that time we played the Cowboys and uh, was it Demarcus Lawrence was um, he was listed as injured? So the Saints' game plan was around everything him not being there, and all of a sudden he's like registered to start he's playing every play 100 percent and and at the end of the game sean payton was like yeah honestly we thought he was injured so uh our game plan was at the assumption that his backup was playing and uh well he just beat everything that we threw at him so we weren't prepared <laughs> yeah like i can see something like that going on like how do you create an edge you create a fake injury that makes the other team feel like is you're not going to play so then they adjust their, their plans that create a mismatch against Leia. I mean, wouldn't that be just atypical Italians? I'd love to see it if that's true. Also on the flip side, if you think about it, um, you know, Inter hasn't always started uh, Lukaku until they've kind of been putting him in here and there, you know. So there's been a few games. I believe the last Champions League game he didn't start. You're correct. And yes. then they, they threw him in there at the end, right? Yep. And then – if you go back two games ago in Serie A when they were playing Verona, um, Jekko started over him. That's right. And I don't even think he came in at all. He didn't come in at all. So it's almost like they're kind of playing a little wild card with him, you know? Yep. So that's kind of dangerous too. I believe Inter lost recently. Hold on. I'm pretty sure they lost in the last six games. There you go. Monza. Lost to Monza, wow. 
Monza. Monza is actually located in Milan, so shout out to Monza. You're you're right because Jeko was actually in better form than Lukaku, which is why he was starting more games. And then as Lukaku, Lukaku started to get rotated in, he started sneaking these goals in in his little 20-minute windows, 10, 20-minute windows, and they're like, Okay, he seems to be back on form. Let's start him again. Right. And, and then see, look, they, they started him um, this weekend against Roma. That's right. They started him against – and see, they, they sat him again, and they won the problem. Right. Strange. It's so strange. Lucky for them, they've got depth, man. They got, they got depth, man. I'm jealous. I wish we had they this do. kind of depth on – on my team. Shit, what's the what's the uh, what's the odds look like? Good question, Mike Daddy. Why don't you tell the <clears> good people? Even, huh? Let's see. Eh, pretty pretty close. Yeah. So so Inner's favored plus one forty five. Uh, if you want to do a draw, plus two ten, and then plus two ten for an AC Milan win. But um, yeah, that could be a good one to go draw or some prop bets. Hey, you know, but. Prop bets might be a little tricky on this one. That's right. We're just saying, got to check those lineups first Mm -hmm. and be quick about it. You might put those down and Lukaku doesn't uh, get in or even worse. Sometimes you want those prop bets. You want somebody to just not get in at all because they'll wipe your bet clean. You'll get your money back. But if Lukaku were to come in for like 10 minutes, then you're screwed and your money's on the table. You better hope he gets a shot in 10 minutes. Mm. I don't believe we did this, and you may have. I definitely did not. Real Madrid hosting Man City. What is your prediction here? Man, I was uh, I was leaning towards a draw for that one too. Okay, but um, I'm kind of thinking. Um, I'm kind of think I can't go against Real Madrid, man. I'm with you there, especially at home. I think Real Madrid is going to be a win or draw for them. I see it going uh, to a win. I'd put the, the money on that two twenty. Going over to Italia. AC Milan versus Inter. Who you got here? I'm going to go draw. Draw. If draw. Leal starts, do you start? I go AC Milan then. You go AC Milan. So Leal is a tilt. I will agree with you. If Leal is in, win for AC Milan. If he does not start, I think it'll be a draw. Or as much as I hate to say it, to my chagrin, I think Inter can pull off a win there. Oh, God. If Leal's not playing. We need him. Yeah. Uh, for me, Salamakis, he just doesn't do enough with the ball at his feet. He's proven us wrong, though. I don't know if you saw that goal he had against Napoli where he beat, like, three defenders and just scored a fucking worldie. You're like, all right, well, he's yeah. got that in his locker whenever he chooses to use it. I don't know why he doesn't do it every game. But anyway, that'll do it for our preview of the Champions League. Uh, time for shout outs. Would you like yeah, first? Wanna... Yeah, yeah, sure. I was going to say hey, in the comments, uh, somebody, somebody commented booty bed stream. <laughs> oh, this is uh Gonzo. Oh, what up Gonzo? <laughs> 852. We just missed him by a couple of seconds, man. Yeah. I'm, I'm in bed. I'm, I'm actually, I'm, this is like the, the safest place for me with, uh, with the baby sleeping. Nice. But, uh, last time we did a, an episode, and it was uh, in the uh, in the the um, the family room, uh-huh. and I, w- I woke the baby up. I think it was like when I was doing the intro. Uh, so, yeah, that's probably me then. That's probably so. Me. I so now, so now Gonzo, I, I hide up in the up in the spare bedroom bed. Yeah, you know, and shoot, who knows what happens in here, man? We got more comments. I don't even know. Oh, all good. Hey, Gonzo, real quick, if you're listening to us, who do you have winning Real Madrid hosting Man City, and then who do you have winning AC Milan versus Inter? Drop it in the comments. I'm curious to see what you think. By the way, Leao is a question mark for AC Milan. We were just discussing how our picks vary based on whether or not he starts. So keep that in mind. Drop in your predictions down below. Mm. Do it, do it, do it. I'll I'll stay in bed for you. (laughs) Look at his bed head. Here we go. Ooh. Whoa. 
<laughs> Madrid three to one, Milan and Inter draw or Inter two one. Man, I I I agree with you there. If Leao doesn't play, ah, uh, ah, uh, that's all I got. Ah, uh, mm. three to mm-hmm. one though for Madrid. That's a that's a bold score. Yeah, that's hot. I do that's like it though team. because Holland's probably going to score at least one. So I mean that's a safe assumption there. Right. Ken. Benzema and company put three in on Man City. Ah, uh, it's possible. It's a tall task, but someone's got to do it. Okay, here we go. This was uh, he, he's qualifying his answer only if Leao doesn't play, draw, or inter win. I got to say, I agree with you there. That was my exact prediction. Um, I don't know if you heard earlier, Gonzo, but we were just saying that this could be one of these. Italian mind games where they say like, oh, he's hurt. And then all of a sudden he shows up, he's 100%, and they're not ready for it. Truth. Madrid is Madrid, formidable. And I would have spelled layout the same way, Gonzo. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> Just throw a bunch of vowels together. <laughs> la- 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 Actually, I feel uh, like, you know that Italian announcer? When Leao had a good goal, he was like, Leao, wow, 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 wow. <laughs> <laughs> man, multiple NBA marks. Multiple. Yeah, wow, 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 wow. Gonzo, it's okay, man. We don't need, you don't need to be a good speller on the footy fetish show. You just need to have some feet and balls. Or feet and balls in a bed. whatever sex you are. You don't need balls. Yeah, feet, balls, and bed. Actually, I'm talking oh, about soccer know. balls. What am I doing? What am I doing, man? Yeah, everybody got some balls. Everybody's got balls. So he's good. He's got both. Yeah, there you go. everybody's got balls. But that's for the women out there. We want to we wanna be inclusive. You got balls, ladies. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll stop with the non-PC talk here. <laughs> Gonzo says, I got both. He's good. Yeah, I agree. He's good, man. He's good. You got both. All right, shout-outs. Booty, give us your shout-out. Shout out! Um, it'll this is gonna be me just um, bitching a little bit, but um, I won't be too long. But uh, shout out, shout out to Syria because um, like y'all are losing me a little bit because you know what I mean. Like, how do you punish somebody and then be like, never mind? <laughs> <laughs> it's even my club, and I'm like, that's ridiculous. Oh, dude, dude I'm with you. They should be. You know what I mean? I'm with you, bro. Because now that pushes Milan down to fifth place. Like you can't do that to people. Like that's not fair. <laughs> like, and it's not the first time that sh- dumb shits happened like that before. You know what I mean? Like, like the the other time he was in trouble. You know, like like I, I've said it a million times on the show. Like that same year was at O seven. So like they're fixing matches. Both Milan's are fixing matches. But it was like, oh well, you know they can stay, but you guys gotta go. And then maybe we'll give them some points back. It was like, dude, what what the fuck? And then there was the year that that. You know, I think it was FIFA that came down hard on you guys for the for financial fair play. Yeah, and it's like, where's like there needs to be some sort of like, like either FIFA strictly regulates everything or nothing. Like, you know, like, and then I feel like the Serie A is like way too many like hands at the top, like folks with way too much money and way too much power. Yeah, and just have like say so in these like clubs. So it's like, like, like think about it. This punishment came down when like Juve was on like a ten game win streak. So apparently somebody was like, okay, we need to fucking curb this shit right now. And then all of a sudden out of nowhere, like, oh, well, shit, we actually might lose some money if Juventus is in, in the fuck, you know, we might like get our fucking cut some kind of way if they're not in European play at all. So we, so you know what? We'll just like, we'll just give it back to you. I mean, that's, that's in my head what's going on there. Yeah. But it, it's just, that's just fucked up, man. Like nobody punishes somebody and then takes it back. And like the fucking it, NFL don't do that shit, like, it, and they're it was they're, and they're fucking corrupt, you know. Yeah, right. It, it's so. funny you you know as you're saying this, I'm I'm thinking they were such they had such a knee jerk reaction to the to the allegations, like oh, take away 15 points, right? And all of a sudden, <laughs> like oh, we're sorry, give them back. It's like damn, Is anybody looking at this? Thought about it before you <laughs> took them away. Did anybody talk to anybody? Did you talk to anybody? Did you like maybe do some investigative work? It's just, it's weird. I'm with you. That was a great shout out because you take the points away and give them back in the same season. 
Like, it also makes me feel weird as a Juventus fan. Like, I don't want to root for this at all. Like, I don't want to – I, this whole year to me, man, I haven't even wanted to watch them. And it's fucked up. Yeah, you know? but that's that's not your fault. I wouldn't. I don't blame you as a fan. I mean, there's nothing you can do. I, I if I were you, I'd be upset with the club. I think you are, and I'm for sure. Serie A for handling the way they did. I certainly am. Yeah. yeah, it's like I can't I can't like defend you at all because y'all probably did do that. So that's not fair. And then it's not fair to these other teams that have been busting ass all year. And now all of a sudden you're. Just, like we just said, poor Roma, dude. Roma's had a pretty decent fucking year, pretty decent last two years, right. you know. Right. And and now they're gonna be knocked knocked out of Champions League because the powers that be just decided, okay, never mind. Like that's dumb. That's just stupid. No, you're right. It's uh, and it's interesting as well because did FIFA have any say in this at all? I feel like they didn't. I feel like this was like a, a internal, like the courts had their hands in it and everything. So again, like. It's like these people who probably shouldn't be having their hands in in the game at all. Or like, you know, there's been multiple presidents of the fucking country that's that's own teams yeah. in Syria. Like that's just that just can't happen. It's funny. You allow someone who has a financial incentive to make the ruling on whether or not a team gets punished. And if they get punished, you lose money, Syria. But if they don't, you get to keep that money in your pocket. And it's like, oh, well, right. it like that. You guys could, no problem. Here's your points back. No, yeah. Just make sure you pay us that check. Send us that check, bro. <laughs> right. Like, I never I never know what's, like, legitimate or anything anymore yeah. with, with them. It, it's hard to, like, keep track of. Like, if I'm, wa- if I'm watching, I've only watched, like, a few of their games this year because I'm just, like, I just don't feel like it's, like, legitimate at this point. Like, you, you, you cheated, and then now, like, it's okay that you cheated, and it's just weird. I have a feeling there will be some consequence, but it won't be what we expect. And we're going to be like, okay, like it's going to be the equivalent of a slap on the wrist, you know? Right. And then we'll move on. All right. Well, do it again. So much for that. And then somebody else will do it, and, but they won't be as punished as hard probably. Right. Or they will be punished harder. <laughs> yeah, know, like- Exactly. Like yeah. AC Milan was for FFP. I don't think we'll ever yeah. see a team get hit with a European ban like AC Milan did. No. I think we'll see it. And what, PSG only, they were only banned for like a year or something? Or year or they? I didn't know that. I think there was like one, I remember there was, they got hit with, with that too. Really? Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure. Okay. I think we were still in college. Ah. Uh, it was a while back. Yeah, so I wasn't as deep into the the FFP and financials and all that shit. So, I think it was when uh, Zlatan was there, if I'm not mistaken. It had to have been before, because there's no way he would have gone there knowing that Champions League's not on the table. Yeah, let's see. Uh, I'm pulling it up. Pull that up. While you're doing that, I'm gonna give my shout out. My shout out is kind of weird. I was thinking about this today on the way to work. I'm gonna give a shout out to Rain, Rain and Thunder. They always get a bad rap. Everybody's so scared of Thunder. And everybody hates the rain. I fucking love you, rain and thunder. Don't you forget that. You're important in this world. Don't let everybody shit on you. I love you, rain. Love you, thunder. And lightning. You can stay too. <laughs> I, uh, my horse I bet on this week uh, for Kentucky Derby, was the name was Sun Thunder. Sun Thunder. There you go. Sun, sun, sun like the uh, sun. No, sun, sun Thunder. Okay. Everybody yeah. loves the sun, man. I, I'm all about the... the the underdogs, man. Give me the rain. Give me the thunder. Yeah, I, uh, I, I was feeling it too. I, I, I like that shout out because uh, I was feeling some sun thunder. Uh, he, he wasn't feeling much though, unfortunately. <laughs> it should have been rain and thunder. He would have won the race. <laughs> right. Exactly. Come on now. You can't have thunder and sun together. It doesn't work. Right. Hold on. Let's see. Was it? I think it was 2018. Damn, no. why, dude? I'm about to, I'm about to clear. Oh, okay. So I guess they were clear. This was 2017, but apparently they were cleared or whatever they weren't supposed to do. I just remember them not playing though for a year or two. Oh, no. there, there. That is again though with with FIFA too. I mean, you know, for example. We two months ago we've decided that that Manchester City is 
guilty of something, right? Or possibly. Right. Mm -hmm. Yet nothing's been done about that. But like we just said with Syria, all of a sudden, like one one person says one thing and 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 Juve's you know banned for life. <laughs> You know, like, yeah. oh shit! Well, take take fucking twenty points away from them. Not to mention but, Barcelona is another one. Yeah, like where where is their punishment too? Like, why? It's I, I just need some sort of structure in my life, I guess. In my I need you life. know what I need? I need some fucking justice. Justice. Too many people getting away with some nefarious, evil shit. Let's do, let's we need to start punishing some people. Fuck. Mm -hmm. Too much people right? getting away with shit, man. Right, so then, you know, so Man City will end up winning the whole thing, right? They'll win Champions League, and then they'll get the slap on the wrist. They should Even just take we're, the trophy away. We're aware, we're aware of, you know, the rules that they've broken, why they're here right now, Yeah, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm speaking from this, like, don't throw stones at my house, but, like, if we look at the people and the things that they're doing, you know, like... I immediately thought like, man, I run a fucking red light almost every morning on the way to work because there's no one there. You know, like, should justice be brought down on me? It's like, no, right? I'm not hurting anybody. But you look at these other people that are out here stealing money, doing shit for, you know, it's not benefiting anybody but their own pockets, right? I'm, I'm stealing a few seconds off my drive to work. That's all I'm doing. You know, these, these people need to be brought to justice. It's like, um, I feel that way with like, with like college football for years, you know, it's nobody was there to, you know, there's this big umbrella that is, that is, you know, um, whole, you know, serving that justice and making these rules, you know, it's the NCAA, but nobody's actually there to enforce it. So people are just going to cut corners and do what they want to do. And it's finally now gotten to the point where the NCAA just finally admitted it. Like, okay, look, I we can't be all over the fucking place to enforce this at all times. So you know what? Just kind of let things go. Yeah, that's what you need to start doing. This this brings up a good point. When you're in the world of sport and competition, that's when people should be judged to the highest degree on being fair and competing honestly. Right? I get inside the game, there's some there's some foul play going on, but once you get to like the bigger upper management, there there needs to be more. There needs to be more justice for things like this, like AC Milan, like that's the only team that I've seen serve justice, and it was not fucking cool. Everybody else, we all know, Man City and PSG out here spending more than they have, and nothing's happening. Barcelona, how did they get away with all that shit last summer? How the Wait. fuck did pull a lever? What? What the fuck? Yeah. Lever? What? <laughs> always forget about the levers. Yeah, Those are always great. Financial levers. What is that? We got a comment coming in. Levers, dog. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking levers, dog. I wish I had levers. Fuck. How many levers? No, man. Pull? Like seven? Shit. And after I pay my mortgage, I'm going to go to the wife and tell her, I'm like, well, we can just pull another lever. <laughs> pull the We're going to be all right. What? We can take that vacation we've been wanting to take. Dude, Chelsea? Are we going to see some shit happen with them? They were pulling I was, levers. I was thinking them next. Uh, I mean, it's just, it's, 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 it's so like blatant, you know? I mean, it's hard to hide at this point. They're spending so much money. You know what? They, I mean, this is like, I feel like this season is karma for just like trying to cheat the system. This American comes in. Thinks he can just spend a bunch of money. Boom. Like, nah, bro. This ain't the NFL. You can't just come in and buy people. And the and the same – I felt the same way with uh, with going back to – to after Juve bought Ronaldo. Like, this, this is – I was just saying, this, this is the same feeling I have with, like, Chelsea and all these big spenders, man, that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. I, I felt that way about Juve after they bought Ronaldo because that was a big thing. There was a lot of people in Turin that didn't want to buy him. Right. Because because the, uh, Juve actually owed a lot of the workers in town money. It worked for Fiat. No shit. And they were pissed because they were like, well, where's my money? And I don't remember exactly why they owed him money. I could look it up. But I remember reading about how they a lot of people didn't want him to come because they were like, that's money you owe us. So, like, where's that money coming from? And then 
and that was immediately after they bought Iguain for some crazy amount of money. So it was just like, dude, where's all this money just like keep coming from? You know, for a second it made sense after signing Ronaldo because like, okay, now like the world's looking at you, the world's buying your jerseys. They also that makes sense. got that ESPN deal. So yeah, was money coming in the door right away? Yeah, so that, that started to make a little sense, but yeah. but I, I kind of started to feel that feeling at first because then after that they went and bought the Lick right after that for a shitload of money. Yep. So, and then they also did that uh, that they they left FIFA and went and signed with PES. Oh yeah, just that's more money coming in like snap of a finger. So yep. I mean, for me, I wasn't as concerned. I thought that was a horrible move, if I'm being honest. He just did not fit their system. I think he was a great player, and he did good at Juventus, but we saw what happened when he left. Like, he made the team his own, like which it should have always been Buffon. It should have always been Chiellini. And him coming in kind of trumped them, which should have never happened because those two players are the heart and soul. And I think Buffon even said it, right? When Ronaldo left, he took – like he – he took so much of the, uh, I can't even describe it, like the, the locker room chemistry because he was such a big player. But he also changed the locker room to kind of fit him. And, you know, yeah. I'm always going to stick up for Ronaldo. I mean, he had success there. He did play great. But looking back, he probably should not have gone to Juventus, even though he did win a whole bunch of domestic leagues and, you know, had some decent games in the Champions League. They Juventus would have done better buying someone else for that amount of money. But, you know, we live in yep. Martin. It was great to see Juventus beat Atletico Madrid like they did. That was... Oh. Yeah, that was a fun one. Oh, man. Put team on his back, son. Spectacular. That was probably uh, another thing, is that buying Ronaldo didn't allow them to buy pieces that they desperately needed. And then when they did, it was too late. They were now on to their third coach. They were scrambling, right? They went and got Kulichevsky. They went and got Chiesa. They went and got Locatelli. I think all of those players came in, and then Ronaldo left, if I remember the timeline correctly. And then they went and got Allegri, and they're like, sorry, Ronaldo, get out. Yep. And we saw that move forced to Man U. Another one probably shouldn't have happened, you know? Yeah, that was um, that was right on the. They were right on the cusp too. They kept getting really, really close. Yeah, uh, to Champions League, Barcelona, and, Real Madrid. So at first, you know, you, you see them, you know, make that move for Ronaldo, and you're like, well, you know, it's literally the if you can't beat them, join them kind of thing. Right. You know, so you're like, maybe this is the, you know, watching them for so many years, like maybe this is it, man. Like we have literally tried every single thing else you can. What if we just let him put the team on his back and run with it? But it doesn't always work that way. So, And then uh, another thing to point out is that the reception that Juventus gave Ronaldo, I think also kind of pushed him towards there. When he scored that bicycle kick in Turin, yeah. I mean, the crowd was like, we want it. We want that here. Bring that to our club. Yeah, 100%. And, you know, while it is spectacular, his play style just it, – it didn't quite suit – what the uh, what Juventus was looking for, and they they somehow made it work with three different coaches. You know, they made it mm-hmm. fucking work somehow. It's crazy. Oh yeah, unbelievable, man, unbelievable. Just goes to show, right? Like Juventus, since they have since in the last three years, they've been struggling to finish top of the league. But at the same time, those guys just find a way to stay relevant. Like this year, right? The fifteen points they were close. Even without those 15 points. And then you're like, man, if those 15 points could give them back to Juventus, they're top two in the league. And you're like, fuck. And they've, and they've dropped a lot of big games this year. Yeah. A lot of big okay. games. Like, they're, they're, This has been one of those years where I'm even like, man, big game today. Big game today. And I can't tell you one that I've been like, except maybe Atlanta this weekend. That was clutch. They had to have that one, and they did it. But other than that, man, there's been so many games this year where I've just – Expected a win and just no, especially the Napoli one where Napoli just like blew them out. Yeah, <laughs> so it's crazy, man. They they make it happen. They stay relevant. I got to give them credit. As much as uh, I miss Allegri, you know we we let a good coach go, man, and look what he's done. 
right? He's just he makes magic happen. Would you be upset? I'm gonna. This is probably the last talking point, and we gotta wrap it up. Would you be upset if Allegri stayed next season? Um. Yeah. Really? Yeah, because at this point, uh, some of the players are starting to kind of. He's starting to lose some of the players, and mm. it's kind of been in talks the last few years for him to maybe do something else. So I'm starting to feel like maybe his heart's not even there anymore. Mm. He's starting to come out with these wacky formations. I've seen you. I'm sure you've seen a few of them. Uh, the players are starting to question it. Uh, that was actually two games ago. The last loss they had. It was the last Serie A loss they had, where some players, answer? some players started. Yeah, some players started to say some things about him, and then um, right after that, all of a sudden, but then all of a sudden they turn around, they go beat Sporting in in Europa. So. So it's like, you know, I, I like him as a coach, but maybe I, I feel like I feel like it's maybe time for both sides to start doing something else. Maybe bring Conti back. Who knows? Oh, he's chilling. He's chilling, waiting. I'm, I follow him. I follow him on our account. He was chilling with the family in Paris. Today, oh, so. Please don't do that. God, <laughs> I would love that, but I would hate it at the same time. I feel like he wants to because. You know, he could be totally looking at some jobs right now, but he's just chilling, chilling with the fam in Paris last weekend. That's literally like the perfect replacement for Allegri. Yeah, yeah, like to just bring to to almost like you know be like kind of a cleaning house kind of thing. And you, you know, know they're gonna go give him some some money to spend too. <laughs> yeah, Sheesh. you know it'd be funny if he went and grabbed Bentoncour and Kulichevsky from time and brought him back. <laughs> and brought him yeah. back. <laughs> I'd be about that. That'd oh, be awesome. that shit would be funny as fuck, man. That would be sure. fun. But all right, sir. I think it's time to close it out. Well, we want to thank you all. Appreciate y'all. We'll see y'all tomorrow at kickoff. Uh, Gonzo, thank you so much. It was a pleasure. Hopefully Madrid does pull it out tomorrow. I might put some. I might put a dollar or two on that. Um, He's Osho. I'm Big Underwear Booty. This has been the Footy Fetish Show, where the fetish is real and the footy is soccer. Peace out, Boy Scouts. Big Underwear. I had to throw this in there right at the end. Guy, all fellas.